Who are the wandering spirits that's been called to challenge the unexplored uh, lab underground labyrinth of the area? Create your own puppet soldiers to fight with you. Organize a witch brigade as your first step towards conquering the labyrinth. Create puppet soldier. Go to the base menu and select puppet for the workbench. Yeah. This is a workbench screen. You'll be able to work on puppets. Here's a brief explanation for each option. You select craft puppet. You create new puppet soldiers using the soul vials and puppet parts. Soul vial contains an ingredient known as soul clarity. The higher the number, the more powerful the puppet soldier. Sometimes body parts are damaged, and you'll need to repair them through the repair puppet. Items will be required to do so. Puppet soldier's strength will decrease greatly if arms, legs, or other body parts are lost. Repair them as soon as possible. If you'd like to use Destroy Puppet, you may completely destroy a puppet soldier in your possession. It will never be as it once was. Soul transfer is not accessible at this time. You can tra transfer a puppet soul to another facet. This can be considered reincarnation. This will strengthen the soul and allow you to create more puppet powerful puppet soldiers. Now let's make a puppet soldier. Select Craft Puppet. Okay. Small soul. Okay. When you craft the puppet, you must first... Uh, First, consider its facet. Then you can pick out a name and assign various custom settings. Facets are basically different roles. Each one will have a different characteristics. And read the description carefully. Some focus on offense, others on defense. You can decide based on strategic reasons, or simply because you like the way they look. Don't forget to name your puppet soldiers. You can also leave it up to chance and randomize their name. The following will explain various parameters for puppet soldiers. HP is H, hit points, battling other situations will cause it to fall, you can't fight if HP is zero. Yep. DP is puppet stonum points, you'll use it to use stonum. You can still fight even if stonum. Uh, but, but you can still fight if don't DP reaches zero, even though uh, earlier tutorials told me otherwise. Whatever. Strength is a puppet's arm strength, it affects attack power. Con is its core strength, it affects maximum HP and defense. DMP is a puppet's donum strength. It affects maximum DP and strength of donum. Okay, so it is strictly... So DMP is strictly for donum. Gotcha. Just making sure... Just wanted to make sure that strength does not affect any specific types. Um, I mean, unless it's a thing that something says very specifically differently. Chill is a puppet speed. It affects action order and evasion during battle. Dex is a puppet's dexterity. It affects hit power and critical chance. Charm is puppet's charm. It, the higher it is, the less likely it is for enemies to target it. Some enemies may target it anyway. Yeah. Luck isn't available here, though it does exist. It, it affects many factors. Yes, I, from what I said, luck pretty much works exactly the same as it did in Refrain. Luck isn't related to a facet type, so it's determined at random. I'm pretty sure it's determined by your character's name. Most Mostly character's name. I'm not sure if this is like Galeri, uh, uh, refrain where you, if you just name your puppet Lucky, they basically start with the maximum amount of luck anyways, but whatever. Now let's get, uh, your items in order. Let's make puppet soldiers. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, okay. We got our three options for only one, two. Gotcha. Asha Crow. Strongly believes in stars and co common crow. Spear wielding specializes in offense. They excel in battle ba uh, bouncing offense and defense. Okay, so they're basically the same as they were. Shino Mashira. Professional collect uh, collective that practices Eastern battle techniques. They excel at martial arts, but specialize in using blunt hammer. They demonstrate more power in powerful groups. So basically, they're like the Shinobushi from the first game. Except they use hammers instead of uh, swords. Like I said, all the classes that were in the first game are in this game. You just don't get them right away. I, I believe that you just unlock them later. Just looking at the various options I got. The Etro Star, a glamorous dancer that performs large theaters, excels at building rapport and resonance chains. With its cursed spells, it provides support by flicking status effects in the, from the rear guard. Okay, Pure Fortress, heavy infantry that builds a guitar that has been modified for defensive use. Specializes in protecting allies from the vanguard, but soldiers who truly shines in prolonged engagements. Alright, Wonder Corsair. Oh, that's a new one. Adventurer, hero, mercenary, in truth they are the facet that can play a great role in battle due to its great prowess. They're a flanker facet that knows how to survive solo or not. Okay. Alright, Adventor. A hunter that uses the bow of infinite flowers to use mud flame and mist attacks. 
Rear attacker that excels at back damage and excels at preemptive battles with very evasive rapid speed and power. Gotcha. That's supposed to be just exciting. What what characters do I actually want? Like, I don't know if I necessarily need a tank immediately or not. I have like a, I have access to three characters. Definitely want to get one of these because they did some pretty good damage. Um, probably a theatrical star because their attacks are usually full full, full group or well full row. So that's actually good. Oh, I just noticed that I don't you don't start with a caster. Well, whatever. That's not that's not that huge of a deal, I guess. And we got Wonder Corsair. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay. Just deciding which characters I actually want to bring. Okay, that's neat. I like that. Okay. Nature. Okay, right. So yeah, nature's effect, stat growth, sort of, well, not stat, well, yeah, well, how their stats are allocated and whatnot. This is changeable. Like, basically everything's changeable except lucky number. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Uh, he wants strength. Actually, have two natures. That's that's rather interesting. <laughs> We're gonna beef it up even higher. Okay. What if I did berry? Very fiery. Okay. I didn't actually check to see how that worked. Fiery. Oh, okay, so it's like selecting fiery twice. Gotcha. I see. And you can just do none if you don't want to actually eat. Actually need to think about that because I actually have no idea. Huh. I was actually expecting some kind of randomize. Just get some ideas. Yamini So okay. Okay. 
Looks like we still have uh, this stuff. Which natural is just how their stats go normally. Flat kind of puts more points into... Uh, decreases the stats that they're good, usually good at. And increases the ones that they're not so good at. And Sharp basically just do uh, doubles down on what they're actually good at. Sharp's always nice. Stance. Um, right. So we should have three stances. Standard stance, no major strengths or weaknesses, so you can expect consistent output. Defensive stance, HP defense reduces DMP and enemies will target you more. Offensive stance, boosts strength, DMP, and weapon proficiency, but reduces con and luck. I don't know if Moon in this game also reduces the character's maximum HP growth by 40%. Which was probably pretty much like the big problem with Moon. <laughs> it basically made your character a glass cannon. Standard's fine. I don't think you could... In terms of all these things, um... I think some of these sta uh, you can't change unless you do reincarnation. Um, stack growth, I believe you can change at any time you feel like. Nature, you can change through books. Stance, you can only change on reincarnation. Skill select, okay. Lucky number, right. Lucky number cannot be changed once you set it. Okay. I did look ahead of time to see if there's actually any actual important lucky numbers that I need to keep in not Like, specifically the same situation as what happened to Refrain, where you want everybody to have an even number lucky number, because the best grinding pact in the game required characters to be it to have an even lucky number, or zero, because I count as even. In this game, from what I saw, the, be uh, the second best one requires odd numbers, and the best one requires even numbers, again. Though the even though the even one only has two slots to use. A support and an attacker, with a single attacker. And the second best is 333% versus the 666, which requires odd number. I think there's a couple of packs that require very specific numbers. I don't know what those numbers are. I, I did see them, but then I just ignored them because I'm because it for what sound like you just learn what they are sooner or later anyways. Uh, my characters don't really have lucky numbers, so okay, she needs to slow seven. Okay. Let's take a look at what we got. Okay, as long as he has a master hammer, okay. Strength skills, gotcha. Uh S25% chance to do two or three times. 75% to- okay, nice. What do we got? Minus 20 to attack with the enemy that incapacitates. If this is like the same as before, that means that they always learn this thing. They'll always learn the one at the very bottom last. As they level up. And they will start from here. So, it's, let's see. Minus 20 to attack to for that incapacitates. When a player suffers from a status effect- Oh. Oh, I- Oh, these have two pages. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. It doesn't have two. Okay. So there's two pages. Tw minus 20 attack to an enemy that capacitates this puppet soldier for three turns. Gotcha. When a player suffers from a status effect, adds an additional status effect at 100 power. It's extremely easy for an enemy to target you. Uh, that's probably not a good idea. Increase natural recovery speed from poison. Poison resistance, okay. Increase natural recovery from poison status. Boost hammer proficiency by four levels. Mm -hmm. Uh, course strength plus 50 mainly affects defense, so yeah. Okay, so it increases, uh, con by 50%, gotcha. Increases attack by 100% while under the poison. Poison resistance. Wow, he has a lot of weird poison stuff. More likely to be targeted by enemies. Uh, well, there's a lot more skills in this than I thought. Attack 35%. While escaping, has 20% escape success. Next turn's attack for 100%. Oh, wait, when you defend or something? I'm not sure how that one works. Whatever. Uh... Kind of dig that. Increasing proficiency. Yeah, there's flavor text if I ever feel like doing it. Zoom in. Yeah! <laughs> okay. I was kind of curious. Okay. Hmm! <laughs> Cool. Okay. Next. Who do we want? I 
I don't know. <laughs> I guess I could make Rhiannon a one of these this time. I can always change her, change her, change her. Ah! That's not what I meant to do. Because the, specifically because the red-haired red eyes. I'm curious what the other colors are this time. Blue. Oh, what the hell? Oh, that, that creeped me out, because that actually is her nickname. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. She wants mostly charm. Looks like she has agility, DMP. Let's see. She has noble. Oh, gee, perverted would change, would jump her charm up absurdly high. This is an easy one, super easy one. Sun also increases charm. Well, that, that might not be important right now. Okay, what does she got? Heals HP percent per turn, 3% to adjacent. Nice. So she can work as a healer. Hope Soldier gains 50 event paid. Second hit, 50%. If they're at max HP, gotcha. 25% chance to add confusion. Resets after attack hits, gotcha. Oh, it's every time. Okay, gotcha. Every time their attack misses, it increases their attack and it hit 50%, right? Because they had that in the first game. Okay. There's a 25% chance for that. Attack and miss, increase attack, reset. Yep, same thing. Report value. Battle cheer, dance donum, increases attack. Multiplies attack by 1.5 times. Slightly less likely to be targeted by enemies. This natural recovery speed from illusion. Resist to illusion confusion sense startle. Bell proficiency. Percent of HP. If as long as they have a bell and the bell ends, gotcha. Shot fifty percent mostly effect, uh, affects selected enemy target. Charm plus thirty percent resets when attacked or whenever they evade attacks, gotcha. Man, one HP when you're. Ooh, that's nice. You know what? I'm giving her that. Uh, what is running out of this lucky number? I guess. Uh, that I guess. Oof. I just stopped it right there. Last one. Okay. 
was about to say, her nickname's just fake. I say she wants strength and stuff. Just make her very brave, I guess. I don't know. やっぱ。どんな武器でも。よっ。傭兵には傭兵なりの神器があんだよ。お、いいところに。ちょっ、や。や。てあ。大義の何たるかを知れば勝利は Okay, what you got? Swap places with an attacker when incapacitated. Number of attacks depends on unavailable attackers. What? Oh, number of attacks is randomly increased. Each attack consumes three. That's interesting. I'm gonna activate some strength combat. Um, when attacked in a brigade, 20% chance to attack will be covered. When attack 30 per uh, nice 30% no, to enemy's attack power. This is all weapon masteries by two levels. Okay, so she can basically use whatever. That's that's de that's a very faded thing. <laughs> Okay. Good. Okay, I made a good call. What class I put her in? Power recovers. Protects allies. Rushes to cover physical attacks 50% damage. Shows 50% of HP. When attacker is afflicted by, uh, from inflicted cover and is attacked, has 16% chance to swap pages. Oh, if she has a Katari quick, gotcha. Stun value plus 1200. What? Increase attack, defense, and avoid by 50% while the same facet. It, it, oh, ah. While the same facet is not an attacker in the same brigade. Ignoring gender. What? Okay. Increases all weapon masteries by 10 met, met, met three levels. Oh, I guess it would be the cost, because I know this cost thing is actually a thing. Done resistance. 1% chance to become a. Has a 1% chance to become a crit. What? Also increases critical gore if target is the lower rank. Plus 35% chance of uh, counter chance when attacked in weapon range. Greatly reduces a counter hit to max three counters. Oh, two handed, okay. Two handed as. Attack critical heals 5% of damage dealt to your HP. Yeah, that's. Two levels at a cost of 38. I don't know what the cost is. But I'm pretty sure that that's. Hmm. I'm gonna go with that. Uh, Fei Fei, what do you got? I'm closing my eyes. 26, sure. Go. Cool. Got all three of our puppets. Now we create a puppet soldier. You'll be able to organize a brigade. Puppet soldiers can't immediately be sent to fight, but they can be assigned to a coven. You must first organize a brigade. To form a coven, you need a soul pack to note all all the members. Once you register the soul pack with the brigade, you'll be able to form a witch's brigade and fight. Press X to open up the lantern formation menu. No more than three soldiers may be created at a time. At this time, the more you have, the better you'll fare. Please make at least three. Indeed. Make more later. This is about lantern formation menu. You can view and edit all sorts of information here. You'll be able to find the formation menu at the base of the, or, or in the labyrinth. Open it by pressing X. Find the following formation menu. Here's the explosion for each section. Brigade formation. Assign a soul pack to a brigade instead of your puppet soldier formation. 
Characters, change puppet soldier skills and equipment. You can check their stats here as well. Items, check items to obtain from the labyrinth. Suitable items may be used. Map, you can check the overall map of the labyrinth here. Fancy information, you can check various information at the lantern, skills, karma, etc. Tutorials such as the one you are reading can be viewed again from the tutorial section of the fancy information menu. Options, you can adjust various settings like to your liking here. The spin, this is a temporary save function available while exploring the labyrinth. Please remember that this is a temporary save, it will be deleted upon the loading. Now it's time to organize your brigade. Select Brigade Formation. This is a Brigade Formation screen where you'll see a list of your brigade where you can organize your which brigades. Which brigade is made up of five covens, which will consist of your puppet soldiers. You'll need to purchase soul packs to create covens. You'll also have to act. Ah, you also need to have puppet soldiers to assign to each one. Select the coven in the formation screen with up and down buttons and puppet soldiers with left and right. Let's try to start the coven you got from Matt, Matt and Martha. Marta. Place the puppet soldier you just created. You'll be able to form brigades freely, but you won't be able to uh, form them if the cost exceeds 100. Let's form a brigade. Alright, Gene can go on that one. Brain can go in there. Faye Faye can go in there. Oh, shit. Um, rear guard, yeah. And because I'm thinking about it still, uh, where, where, where? Oh, okay. Combat speed, here we go. Slow, why, why slow? Make that shit go fast. <laughs> Doesn't necessarily need to be on the. Oh, that is the fastest, never mind. Okay. It probably already saved, but let's just save again, anyways. よし、大体準備はできたかね。そうですか。ああ、でも地下から持ち帰った物品であれば武器だろうがゴミくずだろうが旦那様の方で全て買い取ってもらえる契約だからね。それを探索費用として必要な品物を揃えたらいいさ。私がここで雑貨店として仲介
があってそれ以上は進めなさそうでしたけどどうかしましたかあ,あーそうだったねそうそうそれでいいんだそういうことを報告してくれんださあ穴があるってんならまずはこいつを試すかねこれで少しくらいの穴なら飛び越せるようになったはずだよそして次はこいつおっとこれで魔獣いわば敵が死人できるようになるはずさすごいすごいホレートンさんこれで怖い敵とは戦わなくても済みますね<笑>そいつは無理だと思うけど勝ち目の薄い敵との戦いを避けるのは私も賛成さねよーく見れば弱い相手と強い相手見分けがつくかもしれないしねヘヘ<笑>皆まで言うなって顔してるよあんた探索を始めたくてうずうずしているんだろうそれじゃもう一度だけ言うよ目的は地下迷宮に侵入しそこに眠る美術品こと気品を回収することまずはそうだね、気品を一つ持ち帰ってもらおうかさああとはあんた次第だいろいろと考えてやってみるこったねそそれじゃあコレートさん頑張ってきてくださいね応援してますから Three witch bells. All right, jump. I was how I was gonna get past it. Oh, level one? Oh. So it comes with multiple levels now? Enemy site, okay. Explore the underground labyrinth and bring back a curio. Yay. Oh, I might as well take a look at this. Okay. Madam Arto's General. General Store has this, has this assortment of useful items for your exploration. Purchase a variety of items that, as well as pawn your items for money. Pawn items may be repurchased. Uh, is the I, is, she, is it going to be like refrain where weapons and armor sell for so little that you're better off not even bothering. I'm sure I'll find out. Story inventory will change as the story progresses. Please check back from time to time. Unfortunately, there wasn't very much to bot. Yeah. Pretty much to, like, healing items was pretty much about the thing. Yeah, repairing, which the game should automatically just buy when I try and need to repair them anyway, so whatever. Mm. Okay. What items do I even have right now? Yeah, so, right. Uh-huh, okay, 100 steps, gotcha. I'm wondering if the silly bug involving this in the first game is still exists, where you use a silver spoon before going down the stairs because enemies spawn after you start moving. So if you did that when doing that, you would basically disable all enemy spawns for 100 steps, which could allow you to get through cer get to certain parts, specifically the um, what was it, the fourth and the fourth and fifth floors or so uh, of the first dungeon. Well, you probably couldn't get that far before the um, uh, before the awful awful miasma that was down there just would kill your party. But you could get get good gear much faster than normal. Okay. Check the areas you've been through already in the map, as well as treasure information. Once you master uh, fence ability, note taker. You can leave notes? Oh. Huh. Oh, that's neat. I like that. Use it however you like. Make good use of exploring the labyrinth. Okay. Neat. 
Okay, so I can also jump across those now, so I can actually get past that part now. Section is a concern to the player fancy. Check the different types of information here. You'll be able to check your skills on the left side of the menu. Select fancy abilities. Check your acquired skills. You'll be able to activate and deactivate fancy abilities by selecting on or off. You check rewards by for exploring under prog progress rewards. You earn rewards for reaching progress milestones. Oh. Various information about enemies encountered. Oh, there's a there's a fucking catalog now. Holy shit. Review tutorials on each element of the game's underneath tutorial. Tutorials of you item tutorials you haven't seen yet. You'll be able to receive reinforcement points and earn mana on the right side of the screen. The armor is also vi visible. This will increase an increase if you decide to perform bad deeds. There it is, the more bad things will happen in the labyrinth, like your character's losing limbs and shit. Don't di overdo it. Okay, I guess that's automatically on. One square hole. Gotcha. Makes perfect sense. However, undetected pitfalls cannot be jumped over. Okay. I was wondering, I was wondering why they had a second page. Turn the quantity and how far enemies are via movement indicators. Careful, enemy symbols are not displayed in unexplored areas. That makes sense. Any cares help you guess what, uh, where the enemies are, even if you can't see them. Cool. Progress. Oh. Progress points. I wasn't paying. Oh, okay, so I have 128 progress points. Gotcha. Okay. I was curious about that. Which position fog field? Stop sending for fighting you and nullifies course one. Ooh. I think I gotta get to that at some point. There's some other stuff. Link certain puppet soldiers with strong bond. Symbol of unity between rivals. That quality gives you. Oh! Okay. Me think gives you experience points. Just hit and deployed. Counter counters and attacks once a turn. Take 65% damage, multiplies damage by 100. Oh, is that something you just teach the characters? Which condition possession? Let's possess certain puppets over suppressive. Okay, okay, so I can get a soul vial at 350. Okay, that's the good yeah. Very good to know. Oh, I can't look at the catalog. Curse you. That, that is important right now, but curse you. Um, uh, status. Oh, okay. Let's well, jumping right to this. You can check your puppet soldier's detailed stats on this screen. You can check basic info, facet info, combat status, equipment info, switch skills, and customize characters. Friendship levels are, and reincarnation history are also available. Here's some basic status information. Hmm. Name is the name given to the puppet soldier. It's used to refer to specific one, but you can also give it a nickname too. Levels is their level. Experience indicates puppet soldier's experience when you see is best by number reach, level and stats will increase. HP is their hit points, decreasing it when taking damage. Uh, faint when the HP is zero, when the HP level puppet zero is above the bar. Considered you'll be forced back to base. It is the HP. Remain donut points. That kind of it. Oh, okay. When limbs are lost, I'll bet reduce capacity. Uh, log. Body indicates puppet soldiers lost body parts. Oh, okay. Puppet soldier gets the critical core, they lose a body part. Okay. To manage the fight with puppet soldiers that have missing body parts, prepare them as soon as possible. Stance represents puppet soldiers' individuality, it'll affect their overall status. Three types of stance. Gun stance, it, yeah, increases charm by 25%. It did tell me that when I looked at it before. Oh, maybe there was a second. There might have been a second page I didn't notice, whatever. Our DMP is reduced by 50% and easier to redirect. Yeah. Boon stance is offensive, 30% strength, DMP 30%, two level weapon mastery increase, however, max it, yep, still has that, which hurts real bad. <laughs> Balance, no changes. There's no advantages or disadvantages. You can set the stance when your first screen of puppet soldier are during soul transfer. Yep, okay, so you can only transfer and change it during that. If in the case, growth type. This will affect their stats when leveling up. There are three types natural, flat, sharp. Natural, uh, you grow natural, you grow and get faster. Flat will suppress their characteristics and all stats will grow evenly. Sharp will emphasize their characteristics and they grow accordingly. The types can be set at puppet creation screen or change after the puppet soldier has been created. Nature indicates their personality, affects their status, and their targets when attacking. We have two choices for personality. One is complex and one is single-minded. Total level of the puppet soldiers, total level including the, any levels they had before reincarnation. 
So clarity is their puppet soul quality. Or the number, the higher the initial value stats. The higher the increase, the more skill points you get. Lucky number affects different things. Set it to any value when you create your puppet soldier. Favorites are puppet soldier's favorites. Set it to any value when you create your puppet soldier or in character customization. Okay, so I can change that later if I really want to. Now for basic information, please check the tutorial if you want more information. Okay, that's not what I was looking for. Okay, luck despair. That's what I was looking for. So Jean is terribly unlucky. Rihanna is very unlucky. Faden's lucky. I can't remember if she was lucky in, in the first game or not. Why did why does this not surprise me? Anyways, uh oh yes, yeah, switch pages that way. Gotcha. Just double check. Oh yeah, I wanted to check and see what Okay, because of the okay, I just wanted to make sure there are weapons and armor and stuff. Oh, right, yeah, I think the skill points... Okay, yeah, they, they cost skill points, but... I think the skill point cost only matter... Like, if I decrypt that, it's not gonna matter. Um, I believe their skill points only matter if you're not in the class. They cost, like, 100% less if it's in, if they're in the class, so... I could have actually given Faden that other thing, and it would have been fine. Yep, you can change this, you can change... Yeah. Oh, okay, whatever. Okay, I was just curious about that stuff. So. Alright. Which petition? Do we got anything cool? Men of March are going to position in exchange for mana on our witch petition. It'll help you explore the labyrinth. There are different types of petitions from unlocking uh, phantom abilities to renaming puppet soldiers. Many phantom abilities are very useful. It'll be difficult to explore the labyrinth without them. Don't forget to petition Madame Marta. If you unlock more petitions with regards to the story, you're but somewhere unlocked through other petitions. Check regularly. Yeah, make the game easier at the cost of um, exchange rate for mana reserves to be worse, and you get less mana. Increase difficulty, get better stuff. Rename your characters if you really want to for a thousand mana, which is, I mean, you could always name your characters all, name all your characters Lucky, and then just change their names because it only matters what you what their names are when they're created. Dispatch. Alright, since I went through all of that, let's just save real quick. Not that it really matters, but yeah. Dispatch. Order will allow you to explore the underground labyrinth. At first, there will only be one you can go through, but the more you explore, the more you'll get. Most important information at the dispatch screen is reinforcement and mana density. Reinforcement, which you can see on the left side of the screen, is the power you can lose in the labyrinth. Depending on your brigade organization, you may consume reinforcement points when you leave, but the rest can be used in the labyrinth. Currently, it's of a little use, but you'll have more opportunities to use as you progress through the story. Now, let's take a look at mana density on the right side of the screen. Mana density represents the amount you can have in your possession in the areas before it's considered dangerous. Mana is a source of magic and can be utilized by a variety of ways at its base. A straight mana is known as miasma. If the amount of ma mana possessed exceeds a certain level in the labyrinth, ominous events are more likely to happen. The amount of mana you possess per dungeon is indicated by through mana density. Be careful not to exceed this number. However, the more mana you possess, the more likely it is that the enemy will drop items. There are some advantages to mana collection. This comes up to the dispatch screen. Let's head to the labyrinth. Yeah, I don't know if it does anything outside of making uh, potentially the Reaper show up and a rare monster. Well, a big rare monster spawn that could either be a high experience monster or the Reaper. I don't know if it does anything else to that because I really haven't looked that far into this game. Okay. The explanation of the new skills you have learned, as well as force uh, field controls and enemy encounters. Now that you have the skill enemy detection and enemy visibility, you can view each of the monster's appearance and location. Visible monsters will be displayed with an enemy symbol on the map. In addition, enemy icons will be displayed on the mini map in the top right corner of the screen. On the mini map, visited locations are recorded and information in the areas marked on it. Press L plus down to view the full map of the floor you're currently on. When you move, enemy symbols will move too. When you touch one, a battle will begin. Press Y in the field to stand for time to pass by. These techniques are crucial to overcoming difficult, difficult enemies in the labyrinth, so take advantage of them. Um, okay, there is an item right here, so I want... There about 
gotcha. Actually, did I find any equipment last time I was in here? I didn't actually pay attention. Oh, God. Guess you can change your equipment. Yeah, 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 I know. You can equip the weapons on either hand, they'll attack with their dominant hand. Never kind of mind. And I suppose you could just change... I mean, you could change their dominant hand at any time, so you can basically go like, Oh, they lost their right arm. Let's just make them left-handed. Weapons... If it's dual-handed weapons, they'll be equipped in both hands. You can also equip shields. It doesn't matter which hand holds the shield, as long as they're not used for attacks. Each body has a dedicated armor, so I'm equipped... So we can be equipped on multiple parts of the body. Please be careful when equipping. Possible to automatically equip your strongest equipment. Feel free to use it when you have a large number of puppet soldiers and find it difficult to select equipment individually. Okay, I did but oh, right, I did get a guitar. Just double checking. Well, the damage sword is. It's a two hand sword, isn't it? I, I, I thought it was telling me that it was going to de-equip the other thing. No. Okay, we're good. She's good. Okay, it's just flat out better. Gotcha. Let's see, we got an enemy right there. Just double checking. Let's see if there's any other items I want. Boy. Don't run. Get back here. Sim. Uh, I have no idea what liberation is. The game didn't tell me what that was. <laughs> but okay. Look around, but that monster doesn't seem to be here anymore. Yeah, it would have been a red exclamation mark if it was. Could it be there are other Phoenix monsters like, like it lurking in the labyrinth's depths? Party gears up and leaves the area. Okay. When moving through the underground labyrinth, you may be asked to perform some type of action. Oh, so this is any different from just having it normally. You can't just go like, I just want to jump by pushing a button or something. Okay, I was curious. For example, you may be asked to jump in order to jump over the gaps in between two spaces, or open to open the door in front of you. When you arrive at it where an action is required, so operation details will, be, will appear on the screen. Follow the instructions to perform the action. Of course, I could just jump down, the, I could just fall down, and by just sidestepping, I'll probably die horribly if I do that, though. Oh, right, yeah. The, the colors that are on the characters. Uh, the, the colored squares tell, tell me what they're actually doing. Uh, yellow is blunt. Blue is slash. Um, I believe that white is fog. Probably. I would have to check uh, rain spells. Uh, fog. Yep, fog. Wait, what? New secret crest, what? Oh. Okay, so she got oh she got the new donum. Protect up to five turns, don't spin this. They both learned something I wasn't paying attention. I didn't notice that Rain, Rain said, that, uh, said that Rain learned something. Uh, she learned. Okay, she learned that. You know what? Oh, she already had that.
Oh, she learned that? Because I didn't teach her that before. Okay, okay, she learned that. My attack's in a brigade. Ah, fuck you! My attack's in a brigade, 20% chance the attack will be covered. Jump or destroy trash automatically press the A as you go. Oops. Okay, that door unlocked. Love and courage. That's a. Uh, that's probably. Gonna, that's a. Uh, yep. Change characters' outward nature to brave. Yes! I love that. Covers that make up for which's brigade are placed in either the vanguard or the rear guard. You can adjust it in battle or in your or in the brigade. Your vanguard protects the rear guard, but overall more exposed to enemy attacks, so put your weaker troops in the rear guard. Next regarding weapon ranges, there are three types: vanguard, rear guard, and van and rear. Sword, hammer, katar, scythe are stronger than the vanguard, while crossbow and lamp are stronger than the rear guard. There are also weapons that can be used in any position, such as Lance and Bell. If weapons range doesn't match the position, it won't reach its full potential. Mismatch will be displayed when you attack. Always consider each weapon when organizing your cover formation. some hits, but she's seen other stuff. Oh, what's her... Okay, yeah, what's her... Okay. Sword is her A+, plus, so she gets the most amount of damage using swords. That's B. Hammer, hammer, crossbow, guitar are all A's. That's pretty nice. And Faden being versatile is always one of her things, so... See, so you do the, so you do this to do this. Makes sense. Leather shield. Uh, I only have one. Okay, belt belt are single. Yeah, they're single one weapon. Cool. 
Okay, these things are resistant. Okay, so, yeah, it said slash at the top. And they also have the slash icon that I think about it, so there's the slash. Good to know. <laughs> Have you heard of mana, the source of magic? I'm sure you've already obtained mana, but here's a formal explanation. Underground labyrinth is full of mana, and through its power, puppet soldiers can always take human form on the ground. In the labyrinth, you can obtain mana by defeating monsters, touching mana lumps, and, and collecting it from mana oozing walls. Mana is useful for activities back home, so be sure to bring back as much as possible. Progress, uh, the progress points on the right side of the screen increase as you explore the lab. I actually wasn't paying attention, to be honest. Progress points only increase while you, uh, as you discover new areas in the labyrinth. Progress points are calculated when you return to the surface. You can receive a variety of rewards based on your total. Ooh. So I'm at 92, gotcha. Was that it for the side? Mm. Damn. Uh, I was kind of hoping that it was like, um, Mary Skelter where I could just select the spot and it would take me there. 